Hello and welcome to the Interchange Book 3 Unit 15 video. Today we're going to be talking about the passive voice for suggestions and for opinions. So let's look at this situation. Here we have two men sitting in the park and they're reading the newspaper and they're reading the same article. Right, so let's look at what article they're reading. Okay, the article says, San Jose traffic gets worse. Traffic has only gotten worse in the last years. Traffic delays are now on average two hours for many drivers during rush hour traffic. City officials are offering no answers to drivers' growing frustration with the condition of roads and bridges, which are getting older and older each year. Okay, so they're reading the article and they are thinking to themselves, well, what could be some solutions to this problem? San Jose's traffic is getting worse and worse and worse and they're thinking about some solutions and they're thinking, well, maybe a solution could be to build new highways or to construct a subway system or maybe to repair old bridges or maybe even increase driving restrictions, okay? Now, these are their suggestions, these are their opinions, right? To what the problem, uh, what the solution to the problem could be, right? So, let's look at the grammar for today. This man's gonna say to himself, well, new highways need to be built to accommodate all the cars, and a subway system has to be constructed to connect the major cities. And the other man is thinking, well, old bridges should be repaired to help traffic flow. And maybe he's thinking driving restrictions ought to be increased to reduce the amount of cars on the street. So these sentences all contain the type of grammar that we are going to analyze today. And that grammar is the passive voice with modals. So our grammar today is the passive voice with modals. Now we have seen the passive voice with modals previously to talk about um, how to do something, to describe a process, but today we're using it to provide opinions or suggestions. So let's remember what the passive voice is. Well, it's very important in the passive voice to start with the receiver. The receiver of the action is the subject of our sentence. So in this case, it's new highways. Then we're using a modal. So I'm using need to for my modal. Okay, then I use the verb to be, which is always used in the passive voice. And then I use my past participle, which here I'm using built. So I'm saying new highways need to be built. And that's a suggestion, that's my opinion for how to reduce traffic in San Jose. Now if I want to describe why, why do new highways need to be built, I can use an infinitive phrase to describe why. So new highways need to be built, why? To accommodate cars, okay? Now, let's remember something. Now, when I use a modal verb, right, I need to remember that modal verbs are special because the verb after is always in a base form. So I need to remember that when I use the, my modal, for example, highways, new highways, need to. Need to is my modal verb, so therefore I'm using be in the base form verb, okay? I'm not changing that verb to be. I'm only using the base form verb, not conjugating. Okay. So, let's take a look at our previous sentences to analyze the grammar that we just learned. So, this man says, new highways need to be built to accommodate all the cars. So there's my modal need to, and I'm using the passive voice. New highways need to be built to accommodate all the cars. This man over here, he says, 
Old bridges should be repaired to help traffic flow. Again, we're using the modal should, and in the passive voice, old bridges should be repaired to help traffic flow. Down here, the other suggestion was a subway system has to be constructed to connect the major cities. So, again, I'm using my modal verb has to, and I'm using the passive voice. A subway system has to be constructed to connect the major cities. And the last suggestion, driving restrictions ought to be increased to reduce the amount of cars on the street. Again, I'm using a modal ought to, and then my passive voice, driving restrictions ought to be increased to reduce the amount of cars on the street. Now, notice in all of these, I'm not talking about who is doing these things. I'm not talking about who is building highways. I'm not talking about who is repairing bridges. I'm not talking about who is constructing subway systems or who is increasing driving restrictions. And that's the idea of the passive voice, is that it's not important that who Okay, so let's take a look at the different modals that I can use to express my opinion and my suggestion. Now, if my suggestion or my opinion I think is just a good idea, I'm going to use these modals here. So I can say should, if I want to be negative, I say shouldn't, and I can use ought to to express a good idea, like a suggestion. Now, if you don't know what ought to is, it's exactly the same as should. It's a different way of saying should. So you can use those interchangeably. Again, say it with me, ought to, or oughta. Some people say oughta. Okay, now, if I think that my opinion or my suggestion is a little bit more necessary, I can use these modals here. I can use have got to, has got to, have to, or has to. Or if I think it's necessary, I can say need to or needs to, right? If I think it's not necessary, I can might say mustn't or something that's really important not to do, mustn't. Or if I think something is really, really important, I can say must, almost absolutely necessary with must, okay? Notice my only modals using to are with need to, has to, have to, has got to, have got to, and down here with ought to. My other modals, for example, must and mustn't, or should and shouldn't, those don't use to. So do not use to with those modals, okay? So I want to talk about something very important with a couple of these modals, okay? The modals that are very important to think about uh, with our conjugation are these ones. Needs to or need to, has to, have to, has got to, and have got to. These modals um, we can conjugate differently depending on the subject, okay? So, for example, let's look at this example over here, a subway system. That's my subject, and it's singular. It's one subway, one subway system. So if I think about this, right, when something is singular in English, I need to conjugate in the third person, okay? And if I look at my modals and I think which ones do I conjugate in the third person, it would be, for example, these ones, has got to, has to, and needs to. So I'm using the conjugation of these modals in the third person with the S's, right? Because that's the third person conjugation. So I can read, a subway system has got to be constructed, or a subway system has to be constructed, or a subway system needs to be constructed, okay? But I'm using the S's, right? Has and needs, because I'm using a singular subject. For example, a subway system. Now, if I change the subject and I make it plural, for example, subway systems, okay, now it's plural. And when something's plural in English, I don't conjugate in the third person. I just use my normal uh, base form verb. So, for example, subway systems have got to be constructed, subway systems have to be constructed, or subway systems need to be constructed, okay? And I'm using my normal base form verbs for those. So careful with conjugating in the third person when your subject is singular. However, 
When I talk about must and should and ought to, okay, there's no conjugation. So I don't need to worry about singular and plural. For example, bridges in this example is plural. Or sorry, bridges is plural, and I only use should. I don't need to think about conjugating. So bridges should be repaired. Or for example, a driving restriction. That's singular, but it doesn't matter because I'm using ought to. A driving restriction ought to be enforced. Or a new highway, again, singular, but when I use must, it's always the same. A new highway must be built, okay? So basically, only with these modals do you need to think about conjugation for the third person. And the other ones, you don't need to worry about. Okay, so thank you for watching, and I hope this video was helpful in understanding how we use the passive voice with a modal to express our suggestions or our opinions. Okay, so good luck.